Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thank you for your patience, doing a little bit of a late night update today as I was at, out at dinner. And right now, uh, the markets continue to grind higher. Another update today, up 54 basis points from the previous close. Uh, Dow Jones also up 63 basis points, excuse me, I burped a little bit there. And the triple Q is actually up uh, 12 basis points, even with the big down day today in uh, Tesla, which is quite unfortunate as we had a, uh, a position in Tesla. But we did a little bit of risk management. I shaved a little bit off before earnings and sold some covered calls, which we're going to be introducing the covered call strategy to the Discord. Uh, and I'm very really excited for that. So people are going to be uh, able to make some, some passive income on positions that we've been sitting on. Uh, and IWM up 83 basis points. So let's we'll start off with the, the SPY. So again, the SPY right now, let's say the SPY starts to get a pullback because we are getting some warning signs at the moment on the S&P 500. Uh, looking at the SPY right now, we have a 12 on the dual band strength index. And if you look on the futures, which we printed a new candle, you have a red dot uh, uh, right here with a smaller momentum wave on the four hour, the daily time frame. Is curling in and potentially about to print print a red dot, uh, and the same thing goes for the S and P five hundred on the window as well. So again, very similar situation here. Uh, and again, this this is this would mean that you know we would we, we may get a bigger retrace, and it could be the start of something bigger. Although I don't think it's going to be just yet. I think we need to go higher before we you know really find a significant top in this market. Uh, and if we do start to get a pullback, then what you're doing is you're just extending this into a one, two, one, two, right? So you're going to do a one right here. I'll make this a little bit thinner and I'll, I'll make it smaller there. So you're going to be doing a one and a two, and then you're just essentially just resetting the one, two. So you're just doing one, two, one, two until you get your three of three moment, right? And the three, three is going to be extremely like bl blow off top. Like it's going to be really, bl not blow off top, but like, it's going to be really parabolic, really bullish. So if we keep going, then yes, it's not a one, two, one, two. And we're doing, you're actually doing just the five, the five, uh, the five wave move, you know, correctly. And, and, and then that, that'll be it. And then we'll do a bigger wave four retrace after that. Uh, and then, you know, we'll go from there. So that's basically it. Don't really have much to add other than that. Hopefully you guys kind of understand what I'm talking about here. <laughs> I'll just label this as one. Right. So if this is the one and this is another two. And there you go. So you got your one, two, one, two, uh, potentially if we do get a bit of a retrace and, uh, you know, you probably retest the previous all time high, if anything, as support. And then I would expect probably a bounce from there and then continuation higher. This market wants to grind higher. There's a lot of people that are keep that continue to buy the dip. Uh, so we're actually getting a lot of dark pool trades too. This is why I'm saying that we may get a potential top. We're getting lots of, I mean, we got a lot of dark pool trades here. We had a small retrace and then more dark pool trades came in and then we just kept pumping higher. So like, I mean, like sometimes you really need to be on top of these dark pool trades if you're really trading off of them. I like to use them as a, a bit of an indicator, more like a confirmation signal. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like looking at uh, the daily right now on the SPY, I'm not seeing any significant selling. Looking at the futures, nothing there on the daily. The four hour, we are getting some selling on the futures and on the S&P uh, S &S 500 here on Oenda. And let's check the SPY. Uh, nothing yet on the SPY, but the futures, we're getting we're getting big money selling up here. So that's probably a bit of an indicator. You can get on the smaller time frames, but I like to focus on the larger ones. Uh, so it's up to you how you how you do want how you want to do your trading. But that's basically it. So again, if we do get a retrace, it's probably going to be a buy the dip moment and a push higher. Let's focus on, let's take a look here at Roku. We'll start off with Roku. So Roku, uh, it actually, you know, <laughs> looks like it's a down day, but it was actually an update today by 68 basis points. Netflix was up again another 3%. So that probably helped Roku up a little bit here. Uh, but if Roku is finished, it's wave one. It should come back in the two. And then you'll get your three of three moment, but you really need the markets to keep pushing higher. If they, if the markets lose lose its footing and it starts to roll over, and then you, yeah, you could get a, a bigger retrace, which would change the count up, and we may be putting 
a significant top in the spy if you see the a lot of these stocks uh, roll over right so maybe this x wave is going to truncate down here and we may never get this last big move in the, uh, the fifth wave and the fifth wave will end right here and that'll be all she wrote so that's this it's, it's interesting it's interesting to see what's going to happen uh, tomorrow we got the pce numbers coming out uh they're going to be coming out at 8 30 uh, i believe 8 30 let me just double check here so pcs yeah core pc price index is going to be 8 30 tomorrow so don't miss it and then let's take a look here at uh we'll take a look at starbucks because starbucks I actually had a nice little update today again there uh, this level is being defended so you can see here you know we keep dipping down up down up down and then this level just keeps getting defended so again big money seems to be holding this level for now let's take a look at starbucks on some smaller time frames maybe the daily and the four hour can show us a little bit more yeah so i actually like the four hour here if this fourth wave can start to curl in we get a nice little tight momentum wave that could keep you, you know, that could really start to push you higher. Let's take a look at the uh, wave edge, see if we actually have any significant buying here. Oversold condition, green cross. Yep, I mean, nothing really new here, just lots of buying, similar situation. So again, big money is going to take this higher. Just got to be patient. Oh, yeah, similar, nothing new. Uh, but yeah, you guys kind of get the picture. My target's right around 102 for Starbucks if we get this move. It should be 10%. Uh, let's take a look at Tesla here. So I'll talk about Tesla and I actually read the count because now we've invalidated the bullish scenario. Uh, for us to go higher and extend this, this X wave, uh, we need to go to this buy area down here. So now that we've you know either stopped out or if you're still in it, then your next ad, if you're going to add to a position, it would be between the 170, 177 to 145 area that is where the next buy tar buy area is for uh for tesla i mean right now on the four hour it's at 17 on the rsi it's at 17.80 oh no it's even lower sorry it's at 17.14 on the daily so again you're getting into some extreme oversold conditions and we've seen what these uh, extreme panic oversold conditions have led to in the past and i know it's because of earnings and it's so bad but again uh tesla 30 billion in cash 125 percent growth on like uh, i believe they're they're that they're not their evs but their uh their electric power or something their 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 growth power i forget i forget what it's called but yeah anyways moving on like i'll just get back to to the analysis i mean you can see when we get into these oversold conditions you eventually get a bounce and that bounce can be massive right it can be it can lead to huge massive rallies 100 106 percent gain i mean this is when you got you got to get to these levels first right look at the rsi here six, down to 16 after this massive drop right and we haven't even had such a big drop right we've only had like a decline of about 31 percent versus like this decline here of 66 percent and we're already so oversold stochastics are reset on the daily and the st stochastics are even resetting again on the four hour and going lower right <clears throat> one hour is already reset so again i think this this is this is primed to <coughs> shoot back up off technicals not fundamentals yeah we could get another dip tomorrow which what i i hope we do i might even add again uh, if we get that dip, if we're, if we're lucky enough, but uh, yeah, I mean, you never know. Uh, let me see if we can find like even some more oversold conditions like this, like a 17 to a 16 uh, on the RSI for Tesla. Like I don't even think we've reached that many, that many, <laughs> that low that many times. Like right here, another 18. So this one's 18 back in 2016. I mean, like look at this big decline of. 40% and it led to a a huge 89% rally all right and then I mean I think that's about it there's no more price there's no more price uh data that's basically when Tesla went public so there's no real data that was that oversold to such a such a such a big area look at the weekly yeah weekly is kind of getting pummeled right now but yeah you guys kind of get the picture oversold conditions I am buying I don't really care moving on 
let's and then yeah, and once you once you reach this area, you should do a a one two three four five move into a final move up, and then you should finish your X. All right. Okay. All right. You guys get the picture. Let's shift gears here, and we'll take a look at Apple. Uh, let's see what Apple's doing. Apple had a bit of a down day. If it's going to come back down, then it should do a, a five wave move down to the 159 area. But the reason I don't like this scenario is that it's the markets are too bullish. <clears throat> the S&P wants to grind higher. Everything seems to want to push higher. <coughs> Excuse me. And if anything, it's just a, it would be a different count. It would mean that this is not uh, the ABC we're looking for. And the ABC was already finished. Like here. Right? Something like that. And then it AB. And then you finish the C. And what you're doing now is you're just starting a whole new cycle higher. And you're going to go to all-time highs. Right? And that's that's basically it. That's that's the bullish scenario for, for Apple. And it's really looking like it. And looking at NVIDIA, NVIDIA should like hit some new all-time highs, but it should get a pullback first. It's finishing up in a wave three. Uh, look at the RSI right now uh, at uh, 84. So again, this should get a pullback. And it should get it pretty soon. Four hour, like looking at the weekly, uh, there you go. Or I think it was the monthly. Yeah, the monthly, look at the RSI. So the RSI can climb a little bit higher on the monthly and still form bullish divergence. So again, Nvidia can technically go higher. It can go higher. Don't get me wrong. Um, and then let's take a look here. I'll finish off by take not to finish off, but let's take a look at um, the twenty-year yield, the TLT. So the TLT, basically the twenty-year yield TLT, same thing. Just do the inverse. So let's say that the TLT is done here, right? Let's say this this ABC correction is finished. And we're getting ready for a leg down. This means that the Fed's gonna start to cut rates soon, and you know they're gonna go like one one percent, and then the market's gonna price in so many more percentage points. So the bond market is gonna trade eighteen months ahead of you, and then you're gonna see this come down significantly in a five wave move. All right, so this is gonna do that. All right, and then and then after that, you know, then then you find support and you hold. And then you reverse back up once inflation comes back and you go to like eight, nine percent on a whole new cycle higher. This is like a this was as this is not the minute. This would be like a whole new cycle, right? A whole new not a grand super cycle, but a whole new cycle. The grand super cycle is like this thing. This is like a <laughs> this is like a one, two, <laughs> and three, four, five, right? That's like grand super cycle. But that takes like decades. But yeah, you guys kind of get the picture. Uh, the tail TLT is in the buy area at the moment on the daily. It's signaling. See, it's trying to. It's it's chopping up traders right now. Buy buy signal, sell signal, buy signal again. So you, you're just you just gotta hold, right? So you just you just gotta hold. You're chopping up traders. People don't know what to do. Traders don't know what to do. And look at look. You're just getting you're getting prime to explode up here. And if the yields go down this much, this is going to be extremely bullish for the markets, which is why the SPY scenario like this is still possible that it's not a one two one two, and that we are already in the third wave and we're just going to keep pumping, right? So that's 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 the bullish scenario. Uh, but yeah, I mean anything can happen. Uh, data can change things. We got uh, the PCE tomorrow. Take a look at TLT very quickly. Yep, significant buying. Look at all these big whales. Uh, institutions are accumulating. They are buying here. And I believe we have uh, the number two trade, I believe, on the TLT. The number two trade on the dark pools since inception came right here, right around 93. So I don't want to get you too excited, but this is this is a good outlook for TLT. This, this is looking good at the moment. And uh, yeah. All right, um, let's take a look at Nat Gas. So Nat Gas, a big, nice rally yesterday <clears throat> off the lows and completely getting uh, destroyed today. So again, we actually had about a 8% eight, eight move. And then the, the data came out, which was actually very bullish because they withdrew more 
uh, natural gas than expected and the, the you know the weather is getting colder uh, but you know the, I'm just, I can't explain to you the nat gas market sometimes it's just crazy right this they call it the widow maker for, for a reason and it's down like it went down four percent today and I got I got trailed out in profit so I'm happy with the gains I made but could have been more if I completely cashed out but I was looking I'm looking to 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 get some more gains right <clears throat> looking to pick those bottoms and just let it ride up because that'll be tens of thousands of dollars in profit and we'll just we'll just reattempt another trade if it goes lower then we'll buy lower and if it, if we are looking for a short uh, then we'll just be patient with it and then we'll short it later on uh looking at oil here so oil has now invalidated uh this bear scenario which means which actually gives me more confidence that nat gas is potentially forming its bottom and it's not getting ready to go lower <laughs> but i won't i don't want to get too ahead of, ahead of myself so now uh, oil uh breaking past the 75 dollar you know psychological resistance now now that it's above here we need to hold we need to hold right we need to hold above it and if it can manage to hold uh, then you can really what what you're going to do is that you're going this all this right here is not going to happen right this is just this was just chop and the fifth wave has already finished and what you're doing is you're going to start a whole new cycle up you're going to do a whole new a whole new one oil is going to go to 100 100 150 100 140 dollars a barrel you're going to have record high inflation. Things will be worse than ever. But that's what this is what's going to happen if this is if this is the the cycle. Right? Cuz you'll 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 make new all-time highs in in oil. You'll go to 200 a barrel. So that's I mean that's that's what's going to happen if if this is the case. It'll probably be interrupted, right? And this this could just be you know uh, a, a WXY into a into a lower into a lower low and you know it, it, it's it could there's just so many possibilities right now in oil it's so data reliant as well on economic numbers but if it takes out uh, the $65 pivot then to me that's your first warning sign that the recession is is you know the market has realized that the recession is coming and it's going to be a hard landing and maybe even a crash landing um, DXY, same thing uh, as as uh, as the the yields. So if the yields go down, they'll be bullish for the markets. DXY just chopping up, chopping here, just just chopping sideways. And I mean, right now you you have a bit of a clear ABC. If it's finished, it should be finished here. It shouldn't go past the fifty percent retrace. If it does, then you're going to the six one eight. But uh, we'll see what the PC number gives us tomorrow. If the PC number you know, it's good. Then the dollar should start to implode, and you'll 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 see the markets rally like crazy. All right. Um. Let's shift gears here. We'll take a look at uh, the Russell two thousand. So the Russell two thousand is uh, basically, you know, in my opinion, I think the Russell needs to make one leg higher, one last push up. I think it needs to do anything. I think it needs one more push up. Once you finish that push up. I think I think I think it'll be done after, but I think you need one more one more push higher. All right, you got your primary count there, and once it's finished, after that I think you pull back. But then we'll take it day by day, and I'll actually I'll just draw it right here. Oh, that's an ABC. I don't want to do that. And you could make the case that it's an ABC, but <laughs> I think I think I think it's better that if we do this. Immediate. Yeah. So that's this is this is what I see for the Russell, and then you'll come back into this area of chop, this this big area of resistance, and you won't be able to get above it, and you're gonna get rejected, and you're gonna go to to to, to low. So you're gonna take out the lows, and like I said, like the the, the algos will get triggered, and you'll you'll they'll smell blood, and you'll they'll destroy the Russell. All right. Um. Okay. So that's basically Eric. Um, you know, <laughs> similar situation. We just need to wait for data to come out tomorrow and then we'll make our game plan. Um, 
quite you know it was unfortunate for Tesla, but you know we'll move on, and we'll add we'll either add to positions like I did today, and then uh, we'll we'll do the covered calls, and then we'll sell we'll sell it from there. I mean, I I think I don't think that that Tesla is is going bankrupt or anything. This is this is so much fun on the on the media right now. It's crazy because Tesla had bad earnings. Right, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> They're still there. They got their balance sheet. They actually did a little bit better than their last earnings. Last earnings they lost eight hundred thirty-seven million. This time they did. They, they only lost four hundred twenty-one million in revenue. For, I mean, like they didn't lose. They made revenue. They just less than estimated, and it's still an increase. But they're just not growing as fast as the market expects. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.